Today, we're going to walk through the setup of a 1x2 curved screen using the new Twist 2. The equipment we will use includes a PC with two outputs, NVIDIA control panel to generate the blend overlap. We will assume you have it planned the exact overlap and are using the NVIDIA control panel to generate the overlap. A laptop with Twist 2 software, two projectors, a curved screen, and networking equipment and cables. Let's take a closer look at our setup. We are using two M-series projectors and a cylindrical screen. Ensure the projectors are set up correctly and that we are connected to the local network with a valid IP and subnet. The shortcut keys are very important for the twist setup. They will help save time. When you press Ctrl plus the arrow keys, that is for single pixel increments. Alt plus the arrow keys allows you to move in 10 pixel increments. Shift plus the arrow keys allows you to select multiple points, then use Alt or Ctrl to move those points wherever you want. Control A allows you to select multiple projectors. Control plus or minus, you can pan in or out. Pressing the enter key allows you to send your file to the display. Here we are connecting to the projectors. We will leave the default name twist for the warp blend name and the other setting as is. Next, we will set the new file options. Click finish when you are happy with the settings. You can use the test patterns to estimate a reasonable overlap. So display a test pattern with a regular grid. We'll use the twist medium pattern. We'll count the number of lines and boxes defaults to 17 by 17 lines which is 16 by 16 boxes. Then we can count the overlapped boxes. There's about 4.5. Using Twist Premium or Pro, the test patterns will adapt for any specified overlap. For now, we'll assume you're using the standard version of Twist. So we'll round this to an even number to simplify the alignment. So 4 over 16th or 25%. So 4 over 16 times 1920 equals 480 pixels. For the warp settings, click Identify. Projectors 1 and 2 are reversed. Let's press Ctrl minus to zoom out. Simply grab the screen so they match what is on screen. Let's turn off Identify. We'll enable the line test patterns and show selected points. Notice how Kyle prefers white markers to the default color, so he has selected white markers for the left projector. We'll start with our outside points. We start at 3 by 3 to get the rough shape with the minimum amount of work. Use the control and arrow keys for course adjustment and control shift arrow key for fine movement. Notice how the points update on screen in real time. Once the left side is complete, we will do the same on the right side. Now, we will line up the center points a bit. We will continue to send the warp as we adjust. You use the send warp or enter key to update the full warp on the projector, which will move the test pattern. 
We've done everything we can do now with a 3x3 warping resolution. So now we will increase to a 5x5 to continue the adjustments. Now we have the 5x5 and we will do the same on the other projector. We will go back to our test patterns and go by grid lines. Notice that it divides into four equal quadrants, so we will line those up. Now we're at the point where we want to go back and check to make sure our linearity looks good through the blend area. So this is about as good as we're going to get with a 5x5 grid. Without Twist Pro or Premium, the next step would be to increase the grid resolution. Since vertical alignment is already quite good, we might only increase the number of columns. Using Twist Premium or Pro, we can instead add control points just where we need them to correct the alignment in the blend region. This is where we can start adding points. You can use the menu or use the shortcut Alt plus click. Now we will highlight all those points and we can move them a bit to align them. We'll do the same thing over here. We will adjust the points one at a time so it looks nice and tight.
To see the blend, I'm going to change the test pattern fill to gray and change the pattern to outlines. Note that the blend hasn't been sent yet, so there is a bright bar in the middle of the projected screen. To show what the blend looks like, we'll send the first. You can see that the projector region is smooth from one side, but not the other. Sending the blend to the second projector results in a uniform screen appearance. Let's go back to blend mode and see how manual works. First, let's disable the blends back to zero. You would first click add to add the blends to each projector. Add blend regions by either right clicking or using the add button. So we'll add a blend on each side. The default happens to be 25%. So let's send the blend and see what happens. That didn't work. Why not? Because we didn't align the blend with the warp. Now we can drag the blend to match the warp curves. We can also right click or alt click to add control points. Note that the ends of the black line must stay bound to the edges of the display. Now we will move the lines to match the warp. You can either compare this with the gray overlay and twist, or you can see the projected markers align with the outline test pattern, which shows the blend boundary on screen. We can send it, and it's looking much better. Manual blends can also be fine-tuned to make them brighter or darker, steeper or smoother via the custom drop-off. Brightness may be helpful to compensate for extreme projection angles. You can see that the screen order shown in the mosaic setup mode does not match the order projected onto the screen. Therefore, we will swap the order by dragging screen 1 to the left. 